Hey there, how are you, the Chronicles? Chronicles. Oh, Simone, hey, darling, how are you? How are you doing? Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. I'm on my, uh, Mondays at noon, Wednesday at, at 5 a.m., and then Saturdays at noon. It's coming. Welcome, welcome in the room. I'm going to get started in just a second. Thank you to all my replay viewers. Thank you for coming in the room. Thank you for clicking on the replay. Please go ahead and share with your followers. Share on Twitter. Um, I'm going to be on for about 30 minutes this morning. We'll be off by 1230. So 12 to 1230 um, with the Holy Spirit at any time. Desires for me to go longer than that, but of course I will. Um, but we're going to be on to 1230 today. So please go ahead and invite those that you believe needs to be on here. Any wives, any wives to be. Anyone that desires to stand in that space as a wife, thank you so much for someone. I appreciate it. They need to be on the scope on this today. Um, and we're going to get down into it and right to it. Let me turn this down just a little bit more. I want the music on, but I don't want it to distract uh, what I have to say on this morning. What God is going to say through me. So I am Cheryl Ravenel. For those that don't know who I am, but... I just want to make sure that I have the right people in the room. Um, one of my passions, one of the things that God has has given me as, as, as a um, woman of God is to be able to minister to wives. Um, I have a, a marriage ministry and I minister in particular to the wives. So I want to make sure that I have the right people on today. And if you're not supposed to be here, I don't want you to waste your time. And I definitely don't want you to waste my time either. So if you do not desire to be a wife, you do not need to be on the scope. If you um, are not a wife currently, then you probably don't need to be on this scope. Um, if you are a wife, but you feel like you are perfect, you feel like you have arrived, you feel like your marriage is perfect, you do not need to be on this scope. Um, if you are a wife, wife and you don't um, feel that anybody can tell you anything as it relates to who you are, who you're becoming, um, or to help you to be better um, individually or in your marriage, then you do not need to be on this scope. And let me just backtrack when I said if you are a wife and if you're not a wife, you don't need to be on this scope. That's not necessarily true because you cannot be a wife currently, but you desire to stand in that space. You desire a husband, um, you desire a healthy marriage. So if all of those things are working together, then you definitely need to be on here. But if you don't have any desire to be a wife, I believe if I stated that earlier, then you do not need to be on here. So if you're not a wife and you desire never ever to be a wife, then you probably don't need to be on here. But if you don't desire to be a wife, but you have a sister, you have a niece, you have a daughter, you have women that are around you that do desire marriage, then you probably need to be on this scope because you can share that information with them. They may not be able to be on here today. Thank you so much for the heart, Simone. I really appreciate you. They may not be on Periscope at all. They may not be on social media. So you can be the messenger unto them on today. So I appreciate you for coming on. Thank you so much for the hearts. Thank you so much for inviting your followers. I appreciate it. Yes, Queen. Good morning. How are you? Um, and I just want to get down to it. Um, one of the things that I do, I am a, uh, a leader uh, within a, an organization called Detour Movement, right? So I have the shirt on today. And Detour Movement, what we're all about is helping women to transform, transform their life, their relationships, and their businesses. And we believe that in order for you to be able to do that, that you have to transform your mind. Hence, on Mondays at noon, that's what I'm talking about. Mindset Monday, we're talking about transforming the mind. Listen, there is nothing that you can do effectively until you change the way you think. We all have faulty thinking. We all have faulty 
behaviors. We all have faulty things that we've, we've been involved in and with. Hey, Gigi, how are you? So we have to get to a place where we're renewing our mind constantly because you cannot go into a new place with an old mindset. You cannot go into a new relationship with an old mindset. You cannot be new as a whole without a new and changed mindset. So within Detour Movement, that's what we preach. That's what we teach. Um, that's what we live by as community leaders, as community builders, as kingdom women. It's all about renewing your mind. And I said earlier, I in particular, I have a strong desire. I have a strong passion for marriages, uh, for my wives in particular, because I am a wife. I can relate to wives. I know what we go through. I know what we deal with. I know our struggles within the marriage. I know our struggles as mothers. Um, I know our struggles from previous relationships as, that we've been in, from our mindset to our heart set, from our attitude, from our behaviors and all that. And God has gifted me in that area. God has taken me through um, so many uh, experiences in my own life and in my own marriage. And that's why I can stand here today and be able to encourage you as a wife in that space that you stand in, in order for you to be better, not only for yourself, but for your husband and also for your children, for your for your community, for your church and whatever position that you occupy. It is my responsibility. It is my duty to help you to become better in those areas area. So that's what I'm here for. That's what God has placed me here for. That's what he's placed in my heart and on my mind. And I just want to have a chat with you. Hey, Sister Deborah, I haven't seen you in a while, hon. I just want to have a chat with you on today. And I want to talk about, um, if you guys are following me on social media, and if you are just a part of my community and a part of my life and, and at all, you do know that I often talk about make, making sure that you are marrying the right person. And let me just break this down right quick. When I say marrying the right person, I'm not talking about marrying a perfect person. I'm not talking about a marrying your dream man, that six foot, dark and lovely, sexy chocolate or whatever, however you like them, caramel or creamy or whatever it is that you like. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, what I'm talking about more so is when you're, when you're, when you're looking to marry someone, you need to be very mindful of your selection because the two most important decisions that you will ever make in life, well, really there's three. There's three biggest decisions, like gigantic decisions that you will ever make in life. Number one is um, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Number two is who you decide to marry. And then number three, who you decide to have children with or raise children with. Those are very big decisions. Those are very big decisions and those are decisions that you make as an individual. So when we're looking to marry, for those that are not married yet, when we're looking to get married, um, it's just not about what he has, what he can do for you, um, you know, how sexy he is and all of that stuff. I mean, all that comes to play because we do want somebody that looks nice. We do some, want somebody that's stable, that's grounded, that's sound, that's mentally stable, that's emotionally healed and healthy. All of that is great. But, in the, in, but at the end, you want to make sure that the person is well-rounded. And I always say, and as a community, Community, we often say, and it's a law, uh, the law of attraction, you attract what you are. So for my dating community, if you're out there and you're continuously to attract men that are broken, or you could, or you, if you're continually to attract men that are unstable, that are emotionally unstable, whose mind is all over the place, they don't have a renewed or changed mind, men that um, have not been in great relationships in the past, and they're just not in, in, in a good place right now, then I would admonish you to definitely look at your own self. I'm not saying that you're in that place still, but there may be some residue. There may be some things that you're still dealing with, and there may be some hidden things that you're dealing with that you cannot see and that you're not aware of as to why you still attract certain people. Um, because if you're still attracting nobodies or no good men or bozos, as we like to call them, then there's a reason for that. And you definitely want to make sure you go back and just evaluate your own life, evaluate your own mindset, evaluate your own place of healing and emotional stability and intelligence, just to make sure that you have you are working in those areas so you can attract the right type of men. And, and also, you want to make sure that you're not going to the same places to attract the same type of men. So you, if you know in your in your community, in your environment where you grew up at or your hood or whatever the case may be, that there are not really good men in that area, that they've chosen different routes in life, then that's not where you need to hang out. Even if that's where you live currently, you need to reposition yourself. You need to go 30 mi miles outside of your radius. You need to go 100 miles outside of your radius. You need to do something different. In order for you to get something different, 
different, you need to do something different. In order for you to get something different, you need to do something different. So if you're doing the same thing, the same behaviors, the same ways, and, and you know what you've been doing, and it's still not working for you, then you need to reposition because you're going to continuously attract those type of guys. And it's not that they're not good men out here. You're just not looking in the right area. You're not positioning yourself to be at the right place at the right time. And even when we're talking about church, I'm not just talking about going to church because we all know that you have all types of people in church. You have all types of men in church. And just because they're in church, that doesn't mean that they're a godly man. So you want to make sure that you're positioning yourself accordingly. And for my wives that are here now and that you've already you know, made the vow of marriage, you've already said yes to your husband, to the rest of your life together. And he's not owning up to that space um, that he should be owning up to. You know, then the work you have work to do as a wife, because the Bible, the word of God, which is our foundational scripture. And I'm going to read this. This is the foundational scripture for anything that I talk about marriage. I have a few scriptures, but this one in particular, I want to read. So as a wife, if you feel like your husband is not operating in the space of, um, you know, of a purpose driven man as a godly man of godly character then as a wife then you have work to do it is then your responsibility to help him and support him in that area so he can get to that place that he is at now it's not for you to leave him it's not for you to divorce him because you feel like you've outgrown him you feel like you're saving he's not you feel like you love the lord more than he does and all that foolishness that's not what it's all about because let me tell you something you know god didn't come so much for to, to build churches. God came to build people. And as disciples of Jesus, as disciples of him, as us carrying our cross every single day, that's what we're supposed to be doing as well. We're supposed to be building people. We're helping people to be better. So if your husband, if your child's father or any man that's in your life that you're dating or whatever the case may be, if they're not operating in that space, you're supposed to help build them. Now, I'm not saying that you're you're their ministry and you're going on missionary dating and you're, and you're trying to save the person. But what I am saying that it is your duty and responsibility as a Christ follower to help build and to help lead that person by way of your lifestyle. So it's not necessarily what you say. It's not you calling him to have Bible study every night and you quoting scriptures on him and you're anointing him with oil. That's not what I'm talking about. It's by way of your lifestyle because by way of your lifestyle, it is in the intent and it is the hope that his lifestyle will begin to change and then he can walk into godly character. Okay. So first Peter three, one through six, I, I'm going to go over this and then I have five things, five, one, one, two, three, four, six things that I'm going to share with you as it relates to uh, a, a, a godly man, as it relates to your choosing, your selection, I mean, who you decide to marry. I'm going to break down the acronyms, uh, acronym SPOUSE. S-P-O-U-S-E. I didn't break down the acronym husband because this can relate to the man or the woman. So if I have men on the scope on the sword, this can relate to the man or the woman. Both men and women need to be able to abide by these six things that I'm going to be able to going to talk about today. So rather you're a husband or a wife, you're a spouse. So that's why I broke down the word spouse. That's what the Lord gave me. So first Peter 3, 1 through 6. In like manner, you married woman. Talking about us, right? Those that decide desire to get married. What were the scriptures? I'm just saying the first one right now, Gigi. First Peter 3, 1 and 6. First Peter 3, 1 and 6, right? So first Peter, Peter saying, in like manner, you marry woman. That's us or us desiring to get married, right? That's who's, that's who's on the scope. Married, desiring to get married, um, recently married or know someone that's desiring to get married or about to get married. It says, be submissive to your own husband, Subor subordinate, I mean, subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them and adapt yourselves to them so that even if, any do not obey the word of God, they may be won over, not by discussion, right? But by the godly lives of their wives. So what is that telling us? That even if the person is not saved, even if they're not walking in godly character, even if they're, they have not arrived like you have arrived, um, sister saint, you know, they are to be won over by the character, by our lifestyle, by our conduct, right? What it did say is not by our conversation, not by our discussion. So you can't preach your husband saved. You can't preach your husband to be saved. You can't preach your baby daddy saved. You can't preach your guy that you're dating saved. You can't preach them saved. It says that they are to be won over by their, their godly life. So let's do a check right now. So if you are married wife and, or, or you're getting married fiance or if you're desiring to get married lady in waiting and this person that you're 
seeing, dating, or marrying, married does not is not changing. If you don't see any type of godly character in him at all, ever, you know what I'm saying? Then you need to check your life because what this tells me is that he is to be won over by your lifestyle. And what I do know is that it does not take God long. So you don't have to be married five years, 10 years, 20 years. You don't have to be dating the person forever, ever, ever. No, that's not what God is all about. God is about instant change. And God says that, that if you are saved, that he will save your entire household. That's what he tells us in his word. And he says, if there's anything that you ask in his son, Jesus name, that, that shall he do so that the father may be glorified. And then he also tells us that if you're abiding in him, he will abide in you and anything that you ask, then he shall give it to you. So if he's told, telling us all those things and he's made all those promises, why would he not save your husband? Why would he not save that man of God that's in your life? So woman of God, I want you to be, to be able to evaluate. Okay. Verse two, when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourself together with your reverence, I mean your reverence for your husband, and you are to feel for him all the reverence that includes, listen you all, to respect him, to defer him, to revere him, to honor him, esteem him, appreciate him, prize him, and in the human sense to adore him, that is to admire, praise, to be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your husband now wives. Let's just be honest. Have we always operated in that space? Wives to bees women that were wives at one time and you know maybe um your your husband no longer here by divorce or other ways were you that way let's answer this answer honestly because i can tell you that i'm not always this way even now hello i'm not always this way this is when they observe the pure when they your husbands <coughs> excuse me guys when they your husbands your husbands to be let me make sure i'm on my time your husbands your husbands to be i haven't even gone in the first one. Oh god we almost almost out of time your husbands to be when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves together with your reverence together. So, so with you conducting yourself like a wife, and I'm going to talk about that like week three, like characteristics of a godly woman. So with you conducting yourself like a godly wife in reverence, in addition to reverencing him or honoring him, wives, woman of God, even woman with sons. And things of that nature. They're men. They're going to be husbands one day. Y'all think about this now as you're treating your sons. Come on. This is deep, you guys. Husbands, you are to feel for him. All the reverence. Did it say some? It says all the reverence that includes to respect him, to defer him, to revere him, to honor him, to esteem him, to appreciate him, to prize him in, in the human sense. Human sense. You're not making him Lord or Jesus. This is a human sense. To adore him, that is, to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your husband. Verse 3. Let not yours be the merely external adorning with elaborate interweaving and knotting of the hair, the wearing of jewelry, or the changes of clothes. Now, that's not saying you can't wear makeup. That's not saying you can't wear weave because I love it. I just decided to be natural at this given season of my life. It's not saying that you can't wear jewelry because I love it. I wear it all the time. But what it is saying is that let not those things be the thing you feel is going to win over your husband. Don't think just because you dress up and you look nice and you have long weave down your back that that's going to win over your husband. Yes, he is visual and he may enjoy looking at you. But if you all dressed up on the outside, but you are all filthy and all messed up in the inside then that cancels that out altogether verse four but let it be the n-word okay guys gals gals and guys the n-word adorning and beauty of the hidden person the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit which is not anxious or wrought up but is precious in the sight of god for it was thus that the pious woman of old who hoped in God were accustomed, they were accustomed to beautifying themselves and were submissive to their husbands, adapting themselves to them as themselves secondary and dependent upon their husbands. And listen, because Sarah, we're going to talk about Sarah right now. It was thus that Sarah obeyed Abraham, following his guidance and acknowledging his leadership, his headship over her by calling him Lord, Lord Cleese. Master leader authority, and you are now her true and terrif you are now her true daughters. I'm sorry, if you do right and let nothing terrify you, not giving away to hysterical fears or letting anxieties unnerve you. That right there is enough. I want to read again, but that's that right there is enough. That is enough right there. And we're talking about the hidden person of the heart. Listen to this, y'all. The hidden person of the heart, which means who is a who a person is really is underneath who you are underneath. 
all of your appearances. Come on. All of your appearances. All about what you look like. Yes. It's not about your appearance. Hey, Camille, it's not about what you look like on the outside. It's about the hidden person in the heart. You can be all made up and dressed up on the outside, be, be a horrible person in the heart. How are you treating your husband? How are you honoring him, if at all? How are you building him up, if at all? And I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to myself because I'm first partake of every message. Yes, I'm first partake of every message that I preach, that I teach, that I convey. Are you coming out your, your mouth sideways? Are you dishonoring him? My God. The hidden person, person underneath. When we interact with others, we should endeavor to know who they really are in their hearts and not to make hasty judgments against them or judge them according to their appearance. When we do not endeavor to know the hidden man of the heart, we make a mistake in one of two ways, you guys. Thank you so much, Camille. I appreciate that. We approve of someone because they appear to be something they are not, or we disapprove of someone of someone because of some outward appearance or action when that individual is actually a wonderful person on the inside. So we have to look at the heart of a man. We have to look at our own hearts when we're in this thing called marriage. And I'm going to break down this acronym really quickly spouse because as we're out here and as we're looking at people and as we are in our marriages and as we um you know are, are, are trying to conduct ourselves as holy woman of god we have to look at the hidden person of the heart so my single woman those of you that are out here you're designed to be married and you're designed to be in this godly relationship make sure that you are abiding by these six things that i'm going to go over really quickly i'm not going to go over the scripture i have to go over it quickly because i have to be off by 12 30 today um but next week next saturday we'll pick up where we left off and we'll go more in depth with it but i definitely want to just give you the six things right now give you a little bit about them give you some scriptures to to ponder on and think about and then next week we'll just do a part two of spouses what that looks like because this is a very important topic and you know i said something on one of my scopes and i said um one of my um social media posts and i was just talking about you know you want to make sure you're very selective when you're talking about marriage, you want to make sure that you're very selective when you're when you're out here, my single woman community, and you're and you're desiring to to, to have a husband. You you need to be very selective. And for my women that are already married, you can look at these things in your own husband. You know, I'm not talking about him being perfect. I'm not talking about him, um, you know, showing his best self at all times. Because if the truth be told, none of us are perfect, and we all have flaws, and we all get into our moods, and we all have our behaviors, and we all have our ways, and all this. That's not what I'm talking about. But when we we talk about the hidden person, just like we just read the hidden person look at that hidden person to see if that's the type of man that he is and if he is not then you as the wife you have work to do our foundational scripture Camille was first Peter 3 1 through 6 where it talks about um you winning over your husband by the conduct and character of your lifestyle and not much by way of your conversation okay so so s spouse let's go over this really quickly guys because I'm running out of time time just goes by so fast oh my god Running out of time. Thank you so much, Camille. Spouse. Okay. So when we're talking about our spouses, when we're talking about a spouse, we even our husband, we want to make sure that he is saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a difference in knowing God and actually having a relationship with God. There's a difference in him being a person of religion and him being a person of relationship. So in our quest to be married, in our quest as women of God, we want our husbands to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, if he is not that's okay. Don't go beat him down. Don't go take these scriptures that I'm about to give you and go over his head with it. And you need to be a man of God. You need to be a godly character. But you are not in that point in that place right there, which you just did. That's not godly character. So you out of line. So you don't that's not what you do. We just read in first Peter that he's won over by the character and the conduct of you. So, you know, we want to make sure that our husbands are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And and when I'm talking about saved, I'm talking about he's accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. His lifestyle lines up with Jesus' lifestyle. His characteristics and personality lines up with Jesus' characteristics and personalities. And you will know that by how he treats you, how he treats other people, how he treats his ex-wife, how he treats his ex-girlfriend, how he treats his baby mother, and all of those things that you should be looking at. So, if you're not married yet and you have you're in a relationship with somebody and you see things that are not of godly charity i don't care if he says he's saved i don't care if he says he goes to church if his life is not lining up with the word of god if his character is not lining up with the word of god he has some work to do before you marry him because once you marry him he's not going to change overnight and if he don't see that he still has flaws and he still has things that he's working on he's not going to be inclined to changing those things so you know you have to be the standard as a woman of god to say hey man of god you know there's some work that needs to be done and not so much going to him and telling him that but by way of your lifestyle making sure that you're standing in that space as a woman of god 
as a woman of godly character so that you can encourage him in that way okay and then you make a decision if you marry him or not for my women that are already married we already know it's by way of our conduct and our character right so ephesians 4 31 32 um, a, a man that saved and filled the holy spirit and that has the godly character he lets all bitterness and indignation and wrath that means passion rage and bad temper and resentment anger animosity and quarreling and slander abusive or blasphemous language be banished from him right with all malice, spite, ill will, or, bus or baseness of any kind. So a man that's of godly character, you won't see those characteristics in him. Now, am I saying that he won't have a flesh fit? Am I saying that he won't have a character building day? That's not what I'm saying at all. At all. But what I am saying is that his life will not look like this as a whole. This is not his practice every single day. Okay, so man, the man that's saved and filled with the Holy Spirit is number one for S and um for spouse, saving and filled with the Holy Spirit. Number two, for P, the P. He needs to be a purpose-driven man, a man of purpose. The Bible makes it abundantly clear when it talks about a man that was created in God's image and his likeness, and that's a man that's a man of purpose. A man of purpose is a man that wants to give God glory. So if your husband is a man of purpose, he will be a man that desires to give God glory. He will know that he has been created and in the image and in the likeness of God, okay? So look for that, woman, my wife. Look for that. If that's not the case, ask yourself, am I a woman of purpose? Am I operating in godly character? You know what I mean? What am I showing up as every single day in front of my husband? How am I treating him? How am I treating my, my children? Okay. Spouse. We're, we're breaking down spouse. Oh, it's for optimistic. You're, he's optimistic about your future. He's optimistic about your children. He's optimistic about the children that you already have. It's a blended, if it's a blended family. So you, know, if you're looking for a, a, a husband or a going to be found by a husband woman of God make sure that he's a man that's optimistic he, he's a man that's of joy he he doesn't look at the the glass half empty but he looks at the glass half filled so even if you have a dramatic baby daddy even if you have dramatic family members or whatever the case may be he's not focused on that but he's focused on your future together wives your husband that are already there is your husband an optimistic man of God then you ask yourself is are you an optimistic woman of God if he's showing negativity all the time if he's pessimistic if he always sees the glass half empty if he doesn't have anything good to say about anything or anyone, then you need to check yourself as well. Because in the beginning of the school, we said that you attract who you are. That's the law of attraction. So if that's somebody that you attracted, maybe you need to look into your own life and, uh, and into your own your own behavior and your attitude to see if that's the characteristics that you're bringing up. Okay, spouse breaking down the word spouse. Oh, I mean you. I'm sorry. Understanding understanding a man that's understanding he's caring he's considerate he's compassionate um, he desires to help you out around the house he desires to to take care of your needs I mean he cares about what you care about right if you're hurt he hurts if he if you're angry he's angry you know he he's compassionate about you he shows that compassion he shows that understanding toward you you know and if that's not the case in your marriage and you need to ask yourself are you displaying those characters woman of God are you displaying those characters wife are you understanding toward your your husband are you caring and compassion toward your husband do you see about his needs and his desires and things of that nature again you attract what you are so if your husband is the complete opposite of you as it relates to character and things of that nature then that's a problem because that's what you attracted so at some point you operate in that space you only attract what you are and your you can your your marriage I always say that your marriage can only be as good as you your marriage can only become become as good as you so it, why by me going over these things if you're looking into your own life and you're looking into your own marriage and you're seeing that there's some things that are missing there's some pieces of the puzzle that's missing there's some things that you need to go back to the drawing board and be able to work on in your own marriage then do that do that it will only be as good as you you may have to be the person that says i'm sorry you may have to ask for forgiveness first you may have to buckle down and humble yourself and make sure that you're operating in a place of of, of humility and humbleness you know what i'm saying he's not always going to to come to you and say i'm sorry babe you may have to take that first leap especially if you feel that you're stronger than him spiritually you're going to have to take that first leap because what you're demonstrating what you're showing him is godly character okay um s s s we're breaking out spouse so s is um the other s this is the second s the first s is saving filled the holy spirit right that's godly character the peace purpose driven right um the o is optimistic the u is understanding second s second s supportive supportive of your purpose your ministry your goals and things of that nature he pushes you he he desires for you to be to that place that god desires for you to be at he's not jealous of god now what i am saying what i'm not saying is that he's not jealous of you going to church every every time the church doors open wives listen when you're married okay your ministry your first ministry is 
home. Your first ministry is your husband. Okay, so make sure you're taking care of husband and home before you go run off and support pastor and whoever else that you're supporting um, on a regular basis. For my single mom, if you're not married yet, you desire to get married, your first ministry is your home. Your first ministry is your ch your children. So make sure that those things are taken care of. So getting back to purpose, I had to plug that in right quick. Make sure that your, um, your, your, your husband is supportive, supportive of you. And if he's not, then ask yourself, are you supportive of him? Do you support him or, or you're just selfish or you're blind, just blindsided and want him to support everything that God has going on with your life, but you don't support him ever. If he has an event, if he has something he has going on with his business, with his ministry or whatever, are you there for him? Do you take away time from your own things that you have to do in order to be there for him? Or are you just concerned about God calling me to be a prophet? God called me to be an evangelist. God called me to preach to the nations. God called you to be a wife first. Okay. You're a wife first. So before you go prophesy to the nation, and before you feel like you got to go pray for everybody, a mom and a sister and a brother, make sure you're being a wife first. I'm just saying, make sure you're being a wife first. And if there are things, if there are, there are things in your if there are things in your marriage, tension is there, you know, things, problems are there. You need to look and see how, if at all, you're contributing to those things, or you need to look at how, if at all, you can contribute to making those things better. Because I truly believe that as women, we set the temperature and tone for our house. We, we, we spread the scent and in our homes so if, if stuff ain't right then we have work to do within our own house okay so supportive of your purpose your husband is supportive of your purpose yes absolutely making sure you pr are praying and supportive of your husband first absolutely pray for him let me tell you oh god thank you so much Simone, because god gives a man the vision he gives you vision as well huh? for your for your your purpose and your ministry but god gives the man the vision for the marriage and the vision for his house okay so you best believe you need to be supportive of him first because he gives the vision to the head. The head is the husband. You're not the head, wife. You may be the head of your business. Like I'm the head of Detour Movement, but I am not the head of my house. I am not the head of my husband. So I'm supporting my husband before I I'm supporting Detour Movement. Y'all hear me? I support my husband. Even if he has something that's not ministry related, that's not God related. I'm supporting my husband before I run off and support Detour, before I run off to a conference or whatever the case may be. My husband is first. Okay, so support. And in, and in like, he will support you. And in like, he will be understanding toward you. Okay? And then E, E, this is good. And we're going to pick back up and I'm going to talk about this more next Saturday. It's going to be a part two next Saturday. Yes, absolutely. Um, equipped. Make sure he's equipped. Let me tell you, we go into relationships as women. We've been broken. We've been abused. We've been scorned. We've been rejected. We've been neglected. We've been hurt. We've been filled with a lot of pain by way of our fathers, by our ex-husbands, our ex-boyfriends, our children's fathers, and just all these things that we've encountered in life. And then we get into a marriage and we expect for this man to be the healer of all. Now, I'm not saying that he is not, a, he can't be there and, and help you heal through it. But there are things that we have to do beforehand, before we say yes to somebody for the rest of, of our lives. Now, he should be able to cover you in that. He should be equipped, which is the E, to cover you in that, in your brokenness, in your process of healing, in your process of wholeness. But that's not for you to take advantage of that. That's not for you to take advantage of that. I'll answer the question in a minute, Shonda. And just use that as a reason as how you treat him or how you talk to him or how you disrespect him or whatever. That's not that's not for that. Okay? So he's supposed to be equipped for where you've been in that broken place, where you are in your healing process, and where you're going. You're, you're, you're standing strong on your story and standing strong in your business. So he should be able to handle you at your weakest points and handle you at your strongest points. You know, I've been in broken relationships. I've been hurt. I've been abused and all of that stuff. So my husband is able to, he's equipped to handle me, cover me when I was in my broken place. And he understands that there are certain triggers and there are certain things that will still, you know, certain triggers that will still cause me to react a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? So he is sensitive. He has to be sensitive. And that's a work in progress because he hasn't always been that way. Has to be sensitive into the area that he also has to be understanding and sensitive and equipped when I am still struggling with some things because, you know, I'm still in the healing process. So he can't be so quick to say, you need to be get over that. You know what I'm saying? And then he also needs to be equipped for where God has taken me 
by way of my ministry with women and wives and marriages and with detour movement. So he has to be able to stand in that space. So women of God that are desiring a husband, make sure, make sure that that person that you're desiring to be with is able to do that. So she asked, how do you get over your brokenness? Shonda, it is a, it is a, a, a healing that you will have to go through. It is a time of healing and restoration that you have to go through. You have to be true to where you are. And the only way that you can be healed from your brokenness is you have to forgive the accuser or the person that offended you and caused the brokenness. Got a girl. Have a, you too, honey. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you. You have to forgive the person that, um, that caused the brokenness, that caused the hurt and the pain. You have to forgive yourself. And not blame yourself for going through it and saying, I should have did something different. I should have been a better girlfriend, a better be mom, a better wife, or whatever the case may be. I should have been a better person, right? Nope. No blame yourself, so forgive yourself. And number three, you have to allow God to restore you wholeheartedly. And the way you're doing that is by way of the word of God, working on yourself intentionally and intently. Like you never start working on yourself. You identify certain characteristics about yourself that are flawed. Certain things about yourself that are flawed and you go to the word of God and see what the word of God has to say about those things. You pray about those specific areas in your life and then you're intentional about working on those areas to be better. So you know you have a bad attitude. Okay, I have a bad attitude. You go to the word of God as it relates to bad attitudes and look up things. So Dr. Google is your friend about bad attitudes, our blogs and all the things that we do that relates to that. And you have to go to a process of, okay, God, I need to renew my attitude. So in order for me to renew my attitude, I have to renew my mind. So it all stems down to forgiveness, forgiveness of your accuser forgiveness of yourself and going through a process of restoring your mind not no longer believing the lies of who you were because we all were something we are our ex something or either we still are right so in order to get over brokenness and hurtness you have to see what the word of god says about you you are healed you are whole and you are restored so we have to begin to accept that truth accept that truth and walk in it walk in that truth be around people and, and engage yourself with things and activities that's going to speak to your purpose and not to your pain. Engage yourself around people and activities that's going to contribute to your healing and your health and your well-being and not contribute to the place that you were. Not always reminding you about who you were, what you were, what you did, how you did it, how bad you were and all this other stuff. No, we're over that. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So by way of your relationship with God, you're going to have to go deeper in God. You're going to have to get up and pray. You're going to have to get into his word. You're going to have to study his word. You're going to have to get deep into what he has called you to do. You're going to have to operate in your purpose. There's so many things, but the first thing is your forgiveness or your accuser yourself and then renewing your mind. Your mind is renewed by, uh, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, our foundation scripture. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want to share something with you really quickly, Shonda, really quickly. Um, and this girl has shared this with me when we were talking about, um, you know, Joe's book up, coming up, Sexless Single. And she gave me 12 things in the book of Romans. Um, and it's in that scripture and just 12 things. You're so welcome that you can look at within your own life because there's a restoration that has to take place, honey. It's, it, it takes time. It takes time. Uh, you know, it's not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. It's not going to be something that you're going to wake up one day. And you're like, oh, I'm healed. I'm whole. No, it takes time. I still go through healing moments. I still go through through moments that I have to get over certain things, get over my attitude, get over, get over, you know, my behavior or whatever the case may be. Now, I'm not broken because I've, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So I'm not broken, but I still have parts of me that God still needs to deal with. And that's going to be forever. That's going to always um, be something that you're going to work on. So don't feel like that you, you know, just because you have errors and you have flaws that you have not been healed. You not have, you have not been restored. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, sweetheart. So don't feel like that. You know, when you uh, continue to attract certain people that are broken and you can see that then you look at yourself and say, okay, there are some things that I still need to, I still need to work on. God, reveal those things to me. And the Holy Spirit, I promise you, Shonda, the Holy Spirit, hey, Black One Ruby, I haven't seen you in a while, hon. Um, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you who you are. Ask Him, Lord, reveal to me. I ask God often, Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me who I am. Reveal to me who I am. 
in God. Reveal to me who I'm supposed to be. Reveal to me those things that I'm still struggling with and I'm still dealing with so that I can work on those things, right? So number one, give God your body. Give your God your body. This is Romans 12. It's talking about you being a living sacrifice. Give God your body. Give God your mind. Give God your emotions. Give it all to him. Number two, live pure. Live pure. Not just from sexual immorality. You know what I'm saying? But live pure in your, in your, your behavior. Live pure in your thoughts. Live pure in your emotions. Uh, and this is Jennifer, Jen, Jennifer Wendy Brown actually had given us this. Okay? Number three, understand what's acceptable. I'm expounding on it a little bit. Understand what's acceptable. How do you gauge what is acceptable to God? That's by way of his word. You know what I'm saying? Understand his reasonable service, his righteousness, and things of like that nature. So even if you just go in the book of Romans, and I don't have to read all of this because really it's just from the book of Romans. 12, 1 and 2. Engage in those two scriptures, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it will show you how you should show up every single day as a woman of God. And Shonda, I'm not sure if you would, um, are going to do this, but this is a great time just to tell you about the Proverbs 31 challenge that's coming up November 1st. That deals with brokenness. That a deal with heartache. That a deal with pain. That a deal with unforgiveness. But the thing is, you have to be consistent. We're on a 21 day fast right now. Fasting from certain things, fasting at certain periods during the day, fasting from different behaviors and activities. You have to be consistent because it's a continued process. In order for you to stay healthy, in order for you to stay healed, in order for you to stay delivered, you have to continuously do and operate in the things of God and continue to feed yourself spiritual food and spiritual nourishment. Just in the same way, in order for you to continue to be healed and well in your physical body, you have to feed yourself food, physical food, right? Natural food. The same thing with the word of God. So I'm going to in this because I'm a little over my time. I have somewhere to be by one o'clock. So I really need to be off by 1230. But nonetheless, I just thank God for the direction he's taking us. And we're going to pick up next Saturday at 12 noon. And we're going to talk about that spouse acronym. The more I want to go over that some more. And I want to give you some more nuggets and some more tools with that as well. Remember this foundation scripture is 1 Peter 3, 1 and 6. That's the foundational scripture. Next week, I'm going to give you more scriptures as it relates to the things that I talked about, the topics, um, you know, you're being, opt uh, being a purpose-driven man, a man who's optimistic, a man who's understanding, a man that's supportive, and a man that is equipped. So I'm going to give you some more scriptures and expound on that a little bit more on next Saturday. But I do want to tell you before I get off is that we are doing the Proverbs 31 Day Challenge, um, November 1st. We're starting that, which is Tuesday. And this all comes from this devotion. So even with this, Shonda, I know you already have this book, so I'm going to ask you to do this devotion challenge with us. We'll be on Periscope, I believe, every single day, Monday through Friday, um, going over this devotion. So if you want to be a part of this challenge, I admonish you to go over to detourmovement.org to go ahead and get the book so you can have a head start. I think it's $12, $15, $15 or less for the book. Or you can also get the Kindle version, which is under 10 bucks. Go ahead and get the book, DetourMovement.org, because we're starting this Proverbs 31 Day Challenge. And if you want to be a woman of godly character, if you desire to be a godly wife, if you desire to be a godly mother, a godly leader, if you desire to get rid of brokenness, um, to walk in your place of esteem, to walk in your place of redemption, then you need to go and do this challenge. And doing this challenge often will continue to help you to walk in that place of wholeness, of healing, of redeem, of being redeemed. So I do admonish you to do that. So this is my time. You all i really appreciate you all so very much thank you for coming on with me thank you to my replay viewers thank you for sharing thank you for taking this time out of your saturday afternoon um, i'll be on every saturday for right now at noon if my time changes as it can i will let you know that i'm also on mondays at 12 noon so make sure you're following me if you're not following me make sure you're following me so that you can get the notifications so you'll know when i'm on 12 noon we'll be talking about the mindset which is very important very important none of this is possible okay hon none of this is possible if you do not transform your mind so we're going to be talking about mindset on monday at 12 noon and then on wednesdays at 5 a.m is wisdom wednesdays uh, wisdom why wow, wisdom wednesdays for my wives you're welcome sister deborah so where's the wisdom for my wives on wednesday at 5 a.m and that's more geared around prayer i'll say you know the foundation of scripture and, and you know say something very brief on wednesday morning but it's more geared towards just praying and covering my marriage your marriage, your marriage has to be and things of that nature. And listen, you guys, if there's anything you want me to pray about in particular as it relates to marriages, 
email me at jillandtrell at detourmovement.com and just put in the subject line words of wisdom so I'll know that I need to pray for that on either the Periscope or on my own time and praying for marriages. So let me know if there's something particular about your marriage. Your marriage should be um, somebody else's marriage or uh, even a particular topic that you want me to share on our Saturday Scopes. Let me know that. And in that subject line, you'll need to tell me wife chat in the subject line so I'll know it's a topic for Saturday Scopes. Because listen, I'm in this for me. But I'm more so in this for you. I want to help myself. And I know that God in, in me sharing with you and being transparent with you and just coming to you and being obedient unto God. I know that it's going to continue to bless my marriage and it will bless yours or yours that you're, you're desiring one day as well. So that's what it's all about. So I'm not in this by myself. It's not about me coming to you and being the expert and being this know-it-all. No, I'm growing and learning just like you're growing and learning. I've been married four years, but I've been married twice. I've been married four years, but married twice already. So I totally get it. I understand exactly what went wrong in the first marriage and I understand exactly what I need to do in this marriage. And just for to let you know, the first marriage, I, I married out of fear. I married because I had a child. I married for all the wrong, absolute wrong reasons. And I know that was not um, where I needed to be, but I wanted to do things my way. So this go around, I want to do things God's way and I want to make sure I'm obedient to him. And I want to make sure in the process that I'm able to bless and I'm able to help you as well. Does that sound good? Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to go. Uh, I have about 10 minutes to get to my destination. I love you all so very much. Thank you for just hanging out with me for my wife chat um, on Saturdays at 12 noon. And I will see you all Monday. Hopefully, you'll be on Mindset Monday. You can take your lunch break around that time. Thank you, sis. 12 noon. I'll only be on, again, 30 minutes. And Monday is probably 15 to 30 minutes. We will see how that, how that flows. But just hang out with me for a bit. Hang out with me. Invite people to these scopes that need to be on it so that we all can be blessed. Let's not do any of us a disservice. All right, sis, love you all. All right, my brothers in the Lord, love you all, Canaan men and Canaan woman. You have a blessed and beautiful Saturday.